A basic power control circuit using a triac and a diac is shown in this diagram. The current through the load is controlled by the triac, since it is essentially in series with the load. Resistors R1 and R2, as well as the capacitor labeled C1 and the diac all form the triggering circuit. C1 is charged via a fixed and variable resistance supplied from R1 and R2. This will happen either in a positive or negative direction, and both halves of the sine wave are supplied by the AC input voltage. Current pulses are created by the diac each time the capacitor voltage reaches either the positive or negative breakover voltage of the diac. These pulses are used to trigger the triac. For most commonly available diacs, the breakover voltage typically ranges from about 25 to 35 volts. The time or angle at which this happens will depend on how quickly the voltage across the capacitor C1 charges up. This is controlled by the variable resistor labeled R2, and it helps to remember the formula time is equal to resistance multiplied by capacitance. Since the capacitor is fixed, we can either lengthen or shorten the time it takes to charge, charge it up solely by varying the resistance. Less resistance on R2 means less time that it takes to charge the capacitor and vice versa. The firing angle is effectively controlled by the RC circuit because the diac is triggered by a discharge of current from the capacitor C1 onto the gate of the triac. The triac then conducts for the remainder of the half cycle and when the AC voltage passes through zero, the triac turns off or stops conducting. Sometime into the next half cycle, which would flow in the opposite direction, the voltage on C1 reaches its breakover voltage in the opposite polarity and the diac again conducts, providing an appropriate trigger pulse for the triac. By varying the point in the waveform at which the triac is triggered, or the firing angle, the amount of power delivered by the load can be varied. This circuit represents a very basic dimmer control.